Hello everybody, I'm Moyako Kisa and welcome to Sports Japan. So as always, we've got some great stuff in store for you from the exciting world of Japanese sports. So in the past, we've featured some original sports such as slacklining and freestyle football. Today, we bring you freestyle basketball. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here. Thank you. All right, so that's a great way to enjoy another side of basketball, I yes. guess. So this freestyle basketball was originated in Japan, right? How old is the sport? Uh, actually, freestyle basketball itself has been existing for uh, 10 years. Mm. But over this two or three years, it's really becoming big around the world. And definitely YouTube and those kind of internet is involved there. Oh, I bet, I bet. Yes. So what is it about the sport you love so much? Uh, actually, why I love it so much, uh, the mm -hmm. story goes back to when I was 14. I went to Canada from Japan to become a professional basketball player. Ooh. And over there on the internet, I discovered freestyle basketball. And since I couldn't speak English back then, mm. uh, it really helped me because it, it was like a communication tool for me. Doing a trick, pass it over to the guy. He does a trick, we create tricks together. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned English and earned a lot of friends. So that's why I love freestyle basketball. Ooh. That's great to hear. So the basketball is so colorful. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, we use a lot of designs and colors because when it spins, it looks really cool. Mm, it does. Yeah, and like uh, it flicks the lights a lot too. Mm. Yeah, we use different designs, a lot of colors. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's check out the battle to decide Japan's number one freestyle basketballer and see what kind of sport it really is. The final round of the Japan Freestyle Basketball Championships attracted more than 600 enthusiastic fans. It's a knockout tournament fought in one-on-one -on -one battles. Each player takes it in turns to perform two 30-second routines. As long as they include the ball in their performance, they're free to do whatever they like. Some use multiple balls. Others issue a challenge by stealing their opponent's ball. It's this unpredictability that keeps the crowd on the edge of their seats. Players are awarded points for ball handling and spinning. They are also marked for synchronization with the music and even dancing skills. A panel of five judges determines the winner. That was so exciting. i never seen freestyle basketball before. I was quite amazed. The top players stand out for their original styles and unique tricks, making them easy to remember. Tam, for example, is the 2012 champion. His style focuses on flexibility, twisting and bending his shoulders like a contortionist. No one else can copy his moves. Basketball man, originally from New York, specializes in two ball routines. Basketball man usually works as a street performer and simply loves to entertain. To win the tournament, a high level of originality is vital. 
The two freestylers who made it through to the final were almost from another planet. Little G is a ball spinning wizard. This time he was desperate to claim the title after being runner up twice in the past. His ball spinning skills really are something else. Lil G made the final after pulling off some massive tricks, including consecutive catches behind the back. Bug, wearing his trademark clown's mask, was his opponent in the final. Bug's style is very physical and he displays amazing leaping ability. He pioneered handstand moves. He blows away the opposition with a relentless sequence of acrobatic tricks and almost never makes mistakes. In his first 30 second routine, Little G tries to put the pressure on Bug with a tricky double ball spin but his movements lack fluidity, and he has trouble controlling the balls. He tries to recover, but has he done enough to pressurize Bug? Bug starts by showing Little G that he knows a thing or two about ball spinning as well. He continues with a sequence of acrobatic moves, completing the first half without a single error. <laughs> Lil G knows he needs something big in the second half to get back in it. He decides to go for broke with some more two ball skills. Unfortunately, he messes up his final move. Bug knows the title is there for the taking. He seems to thrive on the pressure and shows some crazy moves. Including his signature handstand. Bug wins the tournament for the second time, his first victory in three years. The culture of freestyle basketball is still developing. I want to raise its profile, so that's why I wear this mask. My dream is to appear at the NBA halftime show one day. That's what I'm aiming for. That is just incredible. How was this year's competition? Yes, actually every year the level is getting higher and higher. Mm. And a lot of the top freestylers right now, they have really character and their own personal freestyle basketball moves. So that really made the whole level rise up a lot. So what did you think of the finalists' performances? Uh, the finalist, Bug and Little G. I say Bug really brought a lot of acrobats and flips, handstand, big moves. Little G is just crazy about spin. <laughs> like, actually, normal person can do a spin combo, maybe three tricks at one spin, but he pulls out like five or six, oh. which is incredible. So you're saying they're like two different types of uh, freestyle basketballers? Yes, basketball yes, definitely right. different, but really high skill. All right, so do contestants come up with their own performances or what? Um, actually, for events, shows, and TV shows, we uh, choreograph our routine, uh, we br bring in music, mm -hmm. but for competitions, uh, we practice our tricks and everything, but the music, DJ selects it on live, so we basically, we say freestyle on the music. So you don't know what music he's gonna play for you? Yes. <laughs> so it's all ad lib. <laughs> Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yes. I thought you guys rehearsal tons of times. Yeah, we rehearse our tricks, but like the orders and everything mm -hmm. is basically freestyle. Mm -hmm. We listen to the music. That's awesome. So did you enter the recent Japan tournament? Yes, I did, actually. Uh, on the best eight, I lost against Lil G. 
I, my style is a one ball freestyle. Mm -hmm. And I do all kinds of tricks. I do spins, dribbles, air moves, flips, everything. But Lil G was just crazy with his spin moves. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure he wanted to beat the three-time champion. Yeah. <laughs> so how many different tricks are there? Uh, actually, a lot of tricks. Like, I even uh, come up with tricks every day. Every like, day? Yeah, how many? Yeah, maybe five to ten tricks every day. So I can't count how many tricks there are. Like, for example, a normal spin. Okay. That's a normal ball spin, we call. Okay. But just putting it into a different angle, Ooh. the spin looks totally different, right? <laughs> so we kind of like combine all the tricks together. Right. Like. <laughs> That's some combination. Yep. <laughs> so how do you come up with the idea? Uh, actually, we just kind of chain the moves together. Like if I do a finger roll, maybe I can use the roll power to do these kind of body rolls, mm. then to dribbling. So we kind of adjust what kind of elements we want to put in and we basically combine the combo. All right. Yeah. And you get your ideas from everywhere, I guess, huh? Uh, yes, TV shows, even TV games. Even, games? Ooh. Yeah, let's see, movies, uh, like pianist fingers, <laughs> musicians, everything. Everything around us is an inspiration. Incredible. Yeah. So next, we're going to hear from two freestyle basketball pioneers and see how the sport evolved. The final round of the Japan Freestyle Basketball Championships were a huge success. Kengo Miyazaki, the event's producer, is the man who made it happen. He's organized the tournament since the beginning and created the competition rules. Kangol says he came up with the idea after watching a TV commercial over 10 years ago. In the commercial, you could hear the sound of a bouncing basketball and shuffling basketball shoes. These were arranged to a beat. It wasn't exactly freestyle basketball, but I could sense the potential. Back then, street basketball, which focuses on dominating your opponent and making outrageous plays, was enjoying great popularity. Kangol wanted to create a new sport that combined the aggression and excitement of street basketball with intricate dribbling and handling skills. But when he first started staging events, finding people to take part was extremely tough. As there were no players around, I had to encourage people to try it out. I found some guys who I thought could do it and asked them to copy the commercial. Lee was the winner of the first tournament in 2004. He still has vivid memories of the event. I didn't actually enter the first tournament. Someone didn't turn up and I was asked to jump in. I wasn't really sure, but I ended up winning it. I thought straight away that one day I could become the best in the world. After winning the tournament, Lee started to take freestyle basketball seriously. But as he developed his skills, he had to endure some criticism. Dancers told me they liked my style and said it was original, but they also said I wasn't in time with the music. So I practiced dancing without the ball to improve my sense of rhythm before reincorporating the ball back into my routine. Kengo, meanwhile, was still having trouble getting his venture off the ground. We were totally in the red. It was difficult for us to create publicity, but we believed people would eventually catch up. Around that time, Kamikaze entered the scene. He was a breath of fresh air, raising the quality of the contest and the profile of the sport. When Kamikaze first joined us, 
I thought he had an incredible aura. He had real charisma. Kamikaze became the first freestyler to claim two titles back to back, winning in 2008 and 2009. With his long limbs, he developed an incredibly fast style that supporters adored. Thanks to Kamikaze, more and more people started to take an interest in freestyle basketball. <laughs> Lee was the man who helped nurture Kamikaze's freestyle skills. It was like he was born to play freestyle basketball. I think he has a better feel for it than anyone else around. When it comes to single ball tricks, he's one of the best in the world. Lee contributed a lot to the development of freestyle basketball by encouraging talented youngsters to practice with him and develop their skills together. For some time, he retired from the scene, but eventually made a comeback. He still has a major influence today and even reached the last four at the recent Japan Championships. Freestyle basketball has come a long way in Japan. The first tournament featured just 12 participants, but over the past 10 years, it's expanded to more than 200 entries. I'm sure everyone would agree that we're just getting started. I think we can make the tournaments better and improve our skills too. One theme for our expansion is to gain more international recognition. All you need is just a basketball to do this sport. I think once more people know of freestyle basketball, it'll spread worldwide. It's got so much potential. Mm, thanks to those pioneers, huh? Yes, actually I wanna say a big thanks to uh, Kengo Miyazaki because he's been pushing this whole tournament for 10 years now and which that competition really uh, raised uh, freestyle basketball level to uh, next level. So, mm. yeah, thank yeah. you very much, Kengo san. <laughs> so, what are the biggest changes you've seen in freestyle basketball since you started out? Uh, like uh, Lee said on the video, but actually, after 2008, I say we uh, converted more uh, dance kind of methods in there, mm -hmm. like uh, break dance moves, hip hop dance moves, and also we put in a lot of musicality. We listen to the music more. Mm -hmm. Before 2008, the music was kind of more like a background music. Okay. More so, performance like yes, now. Yes, that's right. Right. So I heard that there were some new developments at the recent competition. Yes, uh, actually since last year we have an under 18 freestyle basketball battle. Ooh. Which, uh, yes, you got the video. Uh, like under 18 and us, we have a really big skill level difference. Mm -hmm. And for giving more chances and more opportunities to the under 18, we started this competition since last year. Right. And after five or ten years, uh, these guys are going to be the heart of the sport. So giving them more chances and more time to uh, perform in different places, I think this is going to be a really good competition. Mm, so freestyle basketball will probably get more popular. Yes. All right. So we've seen how freestylers perform individually, but when they perform as a team, it takes on another dimension. Spectators were enthralled with the action at the Freestyle Basketball Championships. The Apocalypse team were so cool. My son is performing today. Apocalypse. <laughs> Apocalypse are in the team event. I could feel their togetherness as a team. I really love the way they work together. The team competition is a highlight for many fans. Multiple members allows for plenty of variety with complex formations and synchronized movements. Each group aims to stamp their mark on the competition, often with performances that tell a story. 
Performers say they love the buzz they get from perfecting their routines with their teammates. We develop our shows together. It's an amazing feeling when we're all in time. We complete our routines and the spectators love it. We share suggestions for doing it like this or doing it like that, and I love seeing the group express my ideas. There are five of us, and it's awesome when we link up. The more participants in the team event leads to larger crowds as more friends and family come to watch, giving more people the chance to experience the excitement of freestyle basketball. Apocalypse were the winners of the team event. The team of three lived up to their name with a dark, edgy performance. They draw the crowd into their world by combining artistically choreographed ball and body movements. Apocalypse set the standard with a well-drilled show. They win their first ever title just three years after forming the team. Amazing stuff. So it's time to bring in two other former champions, Lee and Tam, for a special team performance with Kamikaze. <laughs> Be water, my friend. especially for our show, right? So Lee, how did you coordinate your routine? Uh, we just had two or four rehearsals before the show. Just two or three rehearsals? Yeah. 
Wow. <laughs> the teams are usually students and spend around three months on their performance. Ooh, that is amazing. Just two or three rehearsals and yes. <laughs> what you did. So, um, I bet this team freestyle basketball can really get big internationally, don't you think? Yes, actually, it is right now uh, definitely getting big. Uh, the difference is U.S. and Canada have more uh, basketball courts. You're right. But in Japan, we don't have basketball courts, so the place we always practice is more close to the dance community. So that's why I think our performance, like Japanese freestylers, the team performance became more kind of close to mm. the dance. Right. And right now, a lot of uh, other countries, including Asia, they're kind of getting our style of performance and they're kind of doing it too. So I think it's becoming a, like a big trend mm. in freestyle basketball right now. So I heard that you recently performed in South Korea. So how was yes. the crowd? Uh, the crowd was crazy actually. They really love my freestyle. And when I go to other countries, it always, uh, they are always amazed really because watching videos and seeing it live is a big difference definitely. I know what you mean now. You got to see this live. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I hear that there are plans for a world championship. Uh, yes, definitely. Actually, uh, right now, every single year, there's more international battles. Different country is really hosting different kind of battles right now. And maybe in a couple of years, maybe in three or five years, there will be definitely a world championship. Ooh, so I would love to see the first ever world championships here in Japan. Yes, me too. We got to do that, definitely. Right, so tell me about your dream. Uh, actually, freestyle basketball really changed my life. And I think it can be something like skateboarding. You know, if you just have one basketball, you can enjoy the sport anywhere. So my dream is to spread the word, word of what freestyle basketball is to the world. and get more kids get to get involved in this sport. Oh, definitely. Yes. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. No, thank you thank very much. Thank you very much for joining us, you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and thank you everybody for watching Sports Japan today. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time. So you're gonna show me something? Yes. Are you guys ready for this? I hope I am.